I don't think you've done an interview over the course of at least your UFC career where you haven't said like I want to take things slow. Yes. I don't. I don't. I, have you just kind of accepted that things aren't aren't going to go slow for you? A in, little in bit, I guess. Um, see, I don't like to. There's only. I can't say it without sounding like a complete. Uh -huh. But it's the only way I can say it. So I want to get. I feel like my skill level is like on par with the top guys. Mm -hmm. But the difference between me and the top guys is the experience. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm aware of that and I'm, I'm aware <coughs> how valuable experience is. Mm -hmm. But this is the issue that I've got, Brett, is anybody outside the top 10, mm -hmm. they're not going to give me no minutes in the octagon. I'm not saying that they can't beat me because any heavyweight can beat any heavyweight. They've just got to land a big shot. But I think skill level wise, I'm just miles better than anybody else outside the top 10. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I'm trying to say this without sounding too cocky, but that's the honest truth. So I can either fight Volkov now in London as a main event, or I'm going to run through some unranked guy or some you know, lower ranked guy and get no minutes and fight him not in a main event and not in London. So I wanted to do it in London. This might sound like an obvious question, but in your own mind, why is experience so important? Um, I don't know, it's just very important, isn't it? Experience, like, if you've done it before, you know how it feels and you know exactly how you're going to react. Like, I've never been into the third round, never fought a five-round fight before, never even fought in front of a crowd more than a 1,000 people before, and there's going to be 20,000 people there on Saturday. So, yeah. um, I don't know what to expect. Volko's done it all before, so he knows exactly what to expect. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm aware that experience is incredibly important. Huh. Um, has it ever, have you ever had a moment in your career where, where you, you felt like um, uncomfortable or like, like you just mentioned the crowd, like mm -hmm. that something jarred you or, or, or like kind of got you out of your element? Um, no, I've not. I've not, to be honest. But I'm aware that it can happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm completely aware that that can happen because I've seen it happen to other guys before. And I've seen the UFC like push guys who are not ready to be pushed. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. But... I'm not saying that I'm not ready to be pushed because I feel like I am. Obviously, I wouldn't get bullied into it. Like if, if I didn't think I was ready, I would just say no. But it's one of those things, what other choice mm -hmm. do I have, really? Run through another guy and everybody say, why is he fighting all these people that he's, that he's better than? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be like a can... I don't, I don't want to say the word can crusher because there's absolutely no cans in the UFC. They're like the highest of the high-level guys. But I want to be the guy who's involved in big fights and doing big things and having impressive wins. Like I know that I can beat anybody quite comfortably outside the top ten. I know that because I've done it. Mm -hmm. So I want to take the next step up. So like when you and your your father and mm -hmm. Colin are sitting around talking about this, I know that you guys have like a very cerebral approach to to, mm -hmm. to the fight game. Like, do you say, okay, well, uh, how, how do we overcome this? Like, wh how do we try to get experience when we can't get ex experience? Or is there just no answer to it? Basically, what I've just said is everybody was just like kind of on the same page. Everyone was just like, look, you're either going to fight him now or you're going to run, run over another guy and fight him in six months or mm -hmm. four months or three, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we just got to, we just got to, do it now, really, because what's the point in just yeah. running over another guy? Yeah. How excited are you getting about that big crowd? I mean, we're only a few days away. Oh, beyond excited, honestly. I don't think there's anything that can prepare you for that. Like, there's nothing. I can do all the training in the world. I can prepare for the fight, but I can't prepare for that. Yeah. And I don't know how I'm going to react. That's why I want to do it. That's exactly why I want to do it, because I don't know what I'm going to be like. Uh -huh. So at this point, I'm just guessing. So. We'll, uh, we'll see on Saturday night, but I'm definitely excited about it. Well, you know, some guys, and maybe, maybe maybe they're just not as honest about it, but, you know, there was a big, like, that was a big topic during the pandemic. Do you miss the fans? Do you not miss the fans? Some of them were like, I don't miss the fans at all. Like, I don't even notice yeah. something like that. Like, what do you like about it? Like, I've heard you say specifically, like, I want to fight in front of a lot of people. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I do this. Why yeah. do you like it? Because I've been to a million events before, and I like the crowd. Like, I feed off the energy. Like, as much as I love going to Vegas and, and going to Abu Dhabi and it's like, it's not a big deal. And this sport's a big deal to me. Do you know what I mean? Like I put my, my heart and soul into this sport mm -hmm. and I don't want to like go somewhere, have a fight and be back at the hotel room with my wraps on, on my own, like 20 minutes after the fight and be like, oh, when's the flight? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, when am I going back? Yeah. Like, let's go back and see the kids already because this is boring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to feel that energy and that roar. Like I, this is an important thing to me. 
and I want it to be important to other people as well and we can all like come together and and just just enjoy this thing together when you think about what this fight is going to do for your career um, you, you almost feel like like life is going to change after Saturday like is, is it I've not thought about it to be honest I don't think about that kind of stuff I'm just like so I'm just not thinking beyond Saturday at all. And I know that's a boring answer, but I take Volkov very seriously. I know exactly what what he brings to the table, how serious he is, how good he is, how experienced he is, how dangerous, like I know all that stuff mm -hmm. and I'm aware of it. So I can't be thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna be like a big celebrity after Saturday. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fight this guy, this guy, I'm gonna call this guy. No, like Volkov is what I'm looking at and I ain't looking past that. Are you the kind of guy that, uh, like, do you study a lot of tape of, yeah. of him? You watch it a lot, yeah. a lot yeah. during camp. Yes. Um, obviously, not, not giving away too much, too much, but what have you found? And, and what, what do you got to be careful of? Um, so he, he's got, like, a very niche style, Volkov. He's a really tall guy, obviously. A really strong guy who kicks quite a lot. Like, um, usually big guys like that, they don't kick that well. So I've had to go out my way to make sure I'm sparring big guys of that size. That's why I did uh, some of my camp over in Holland with uh, Rico Verhoeven, Benny Adigbuya, another, another guy who's like six foot seven, his size, and trying to just get them big kickboxing rounds in and just sparring just big, heavy guys who mm -hmm. are good. Like, I've had to go out my way to find those guys. And yeah, he does everything well. Like, there's nothing that you can, you can't look at his game and says, oh, he's bad at this, he's bad at this. Like, he's good everywhere. Everybody in the top 10, he's good everywhere. So yeah. I've got to be ready for everything. Yeah, I was gonna, um, you've had a hard time finding fights. Yes. How hard has it been to f find sparring partners throughout your career? Hard. Not easy. <laughs> Especially in the UK. That's why I, now I've got to start maybe going to other places and, and spreading my wings a little bit because um, I've, I, to be fair, this time I, I've managed to get some really good sparring in. Like uh, I've been sparring a couple of really high level tie boxes and stuff like that, really tall guys. But yeah, it's tough in the UK for sure. It's definitely tough. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, um, it's kind of similar to the question I asked earlier, like, have you thought about how your life is going to change? But I, I've heard you say the way you worded it was, you know, I, I, me and my team have always known how good I am. And now it's just the rest of the world's going to find yeah. out on Saturday. Um, like, you feel like it's almost like a graduation that, that this fight is, that, that you're going, you've, you've kind of been able to, to, to subtly fly under the radar, even though you've won three performance and night bonuses. You know, you're getting a lot of attention within the community, but you, you just feel like that attention and the, the, the attention from the rest of the division is going to come after this fight? Maybe. I'm sure the rest of the division know who I am because that's their division. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the casuals need to start learning who I am a little bit. But if they do, they do. And if they don't like that stuff, like uh, these days, right, I see like a lot of people and it almost, a lot of fighters, it almost seems like they're not bothered about the fights. They just like want to be celebrities. They're just like, like I've got small children, they're just fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not that guy, do you know what I mean? Like, if people know about me, they know about me. If they don't, they don't. Like, I care about my fights and I don't care about being like a frigging Z-list celebrity or going, having pictures with people who've got blue ticks on Instagram and all that. Like, that doesn't bother me. I'm here to fight and do what I love and, uh, like I see a lot of like people just trying to say controversial stuff and be in the limelight like these other fighters and stuff and I just couldn't care less about that stuff like I'm interested in combat and that's it. Have, have you thought about what a fight with Francis Ngannou would look like? Have you thought about what a fight like with John Jones, Cyril Gaon, have you pictured those? Yeah, scary. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as I said before, I think I'm on their level skill wise. Yeah. I just think I need more experience before I fight these guys. What do you think that moment's going to be like when you walk out of your locker room and you're in the tunnel? What do you think that's going to feel like? I would be guessing if I told you, because I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I keep using this reference, and I'm sure like the, the UFC staff who are following me around are going to be sick of it. But <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit of a weird reference, but uh, I keep saying like it's like asking a woman who's never had children, what do you think childbirth's like? <laughs> yeah. and then nobody knows. Yeah. Like, everyone's thinking positive about it. I'm thinking like, oh yeah, I'm gonna feel good. I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I've not got a clue how I'm gonna feel. Yeah. That's why I wanna do it, because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to your walkout uh, almost oh, as much as It's gonna fight. be epic, <laughs> epic. But uh, I see a few people, oh, my walkout's gonna be the best part. I don't care about how my walkout's going to be. I, I want to win my fight and that's it. Like, I'm trying to win my fight. No, none of this other stuff matters, but I'm sure it's going to be good. Do you like uh, headlining? Like, are you enjoying the... I know yes. we're only on Wednesday, but yeah, you like being yes. the top guy on the poster? And... Like I say, um, I'm not doing... Like, this is a big deal for me. 
and I want other people to think it's a big deal as well. Mm -hmm. Like I have been um, doing it in the pandemic where no one really seems that, but obviously people are bothered, but you can't really feel it like firsthand because there's just staff around you, do you know what I mean? There's no yeah. nobody else. So I'm looking forward to feeling the energy firsthand. And I'm sure that you have a lot of people who have been wanting to see you in the UFC who are not yet, right? I mean, who are some of those people that are going to be watching you for the first time? Oh, so I've basically got my whole town coming. There's mm -hmm. like a thousand people from uh, where I'm from coming. So mm -hmm. literally a thousand people. Huh. Um, yeah, it's just going to be wild. I've got all kinds of family and friends from all over the world coming. So it's going to be insane. Yeah. Well, I can't wait, man. No, I'm, 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 I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the fight. Good. Enjoy the, in the week and we'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.